I'm actually more than welcome. In India, if I say I've failed in one venture itself, over. Come back to the house, join a family business, or go back to the work, etc., etc. So that's how it is. So I think we'll have educational institution only has the power to bring in more entrepreneurship in the entire system as desired by the overall economy of the country. So I think it is a must, there's no choice. This, this is a complex thing, how, how to create entrepreneurs or how to teach entrepreneurship. I think it's more of a culture. The, the university or college has to imbibe this culture, celebrate entrepreneurship, celebrate failures, encourage risk taking. I'll, I'll be specific about what are the some small steps that I feel a university can do. Looking from the background of, as an entrepreneur, what do I require? What do I require from my university? There are two things that I feel as a, as a college student I would have required. One is exposure and second is mentorship. These were the two things if available to me would have helped me immensely. When I talk of exposure, I think universities should, should involve students in every aspect of decision making. Let's say if they are implementing an ERP project, why don't students be part of that committee? If they are implementing a change in curriculum or let's say launching flipped classroom or doing any other change, why not students be part of this leading it, leading event management, leading initiatives, leading the thing. This would give exposure to students. Also encourage them to create something. In fact, I've seen the best founders or most successful founders are those who have started and made some prototype at college level. Encourage them to create prototypes, let them fail, Give them some space to fail. Should not focus only on examination or other things. That's one. Second is mentoring. As a, as a student, I would have needed mentoring. I would have needed guidance, both from my teachers as well as from my alumni who have succeeded. Colleges are well connected. A student is not really. He's only connected to his batch. Let, let a student who's encouraged in that get mentoring from a teacher Get, connect them to alumni who have been successful, give them mentoring. I think mentoring would, would help the student a lot in risk taking. And also last, help students share some of his risks. Like I'll cite the example of a renowned university which allowed students, if, if they are starting a venture, they should be out of placement process and if they try the venture for a year, they can come back next year and be part of the regular placement process next year. This enabled students to do more risk taking. They knew that yes, I'm taking a risk for a year, let me give my best shot. If not, the university is always there for me. A year later, I can join the placement process again. So it's more of supporting, it's more of creating the ecosystem. Thanks. Okay, I'll ask a question to you. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll put in my two pins and then give uh, uh, to uh, Mahesh, he has something to ask of us. Uh, you know, just to kind of add my uh, two points to this, one of the ills of our education system is the whole uh, sense of entitlement that it brings in. The higher your JE rank is, the higher your CAT rank is, the higher is the sense of entitlement. And the entitlement along with it brings this need to not work, which means I now I am going to stand I am this blessing uh, from God to this mankind, human race, and uh, I have to be now given what I ask for. Entrepreneurship takes that away because it doesn't absolutely care about your credentials on paper. Which means, like Abdul beautifully said, uh, I think we need to acknowledge that entrepreneurship, at least in my own experience, it's about 90% failures. You know, this morning Sanjay was really feeling miserable and failed about not having the required kind and number of audience in this hall. It was an entrepreneurial venture that he undertook in the last four weeks or whatever and which means you are moving out of your comfort zone and trying something new. When you try something new, you are going to fail. So with this awareness, if I am ahead of the institutions, what will I do? If I really care about the students, I am going to advance this learning when the hurt is going to be the least, which means in a B-school or in an engineering college, it has to be part of his two out of a four year stay. I want him to fail. If some guy really succeeds and builds out a Google, that's a one in a 20 year story. 
but that is that is one thing that i would recommend which means please make space make room for projects which is got which the world will say this is rubbish and he should get it on his face don't don't create any more safety net than giving him space that's number one the second point i would reiterate again what mahesh said which is please see ideal is your alum who's like between 5 to 10 years he need not have built out a 1000 crore market cap company he can relate to them he's more like a bade bhaiya than this unreachable superstar and whatever he says is is god's uh, voice that will be the beautiful thing if you don't have an alum still stick to the guy from their generation because they will come they will spend time you would want their mentorship mentorship time with your students if some of them can come and be a part of a small two credit three credit course in teaching entrepreneurship even great i think that will that that will add a lot of uh, value i'll pause here give it to mahesh and then we'll open it up for two three four questions because we have about 10 minutes of time uh, you know i'll just flip the entire thing to future of education and satya is here so i think we should take the benefit of his time also uh, satya what do you think one thing that will really really help education move ahead with a lot of hope and what is the biggest worry that you have of education as far as future of education is concerned you know uh, i was i read somewhere that internet took its birth uh, uh, in, in an education institutions and the armed forces were the first to adopt it and the corporate sector was the was the next and education systems many of them are still in denial because i am a teacher and as teachers we are kind of prone to saying that you know i am i am the sai baba the you know the television cannot replace me whereas my own experience has been that if i am a teacher and if i value my time i would not go into a class and teach newton's second law of motion a million times for the pedantic part of it and this we have done so uh, coming back to your question mahesh my worry is that we as some of those are, are, are i don't want to generalize it but i think our inertia is my biggest worry whereas those who have embraced is talking about a 400 crore uh, uh, revenue Uh, on campus incubated companies that's not as important in my view that has a thousand employees all of them are ras tas eas you know research assistants teaching assistants uh, executive assistants on campus is a valuable resource and if i remember correctly there were 17000 students or what is the number that we have in the uh, engineering engineering 7000 students which means practically you have one is to seven mentorship available on campus free of cost so that would be my worry that would be my worry i would not say that technology will replace this good understanding of technology pedagogy and learning outcomes all three have to be married okay yeah? please yeah that our education system could not provide employability of 100% we are somewhere staggering or struggling at 30% that is the current state of our education all said and talk policy and everything we are moving one step ahead to use the education to create entrepreneurs or create entrepreneurs in education by starting a school wherever there are kids are something like that i know that distinction was not made in the beginning israel mothers wish their kids drop out of the university so that they can become entrepreneurs switzerland has population which is equivalent to the population of engineers in india we are nowhere close to even in patenting to them close to them israel has patent close to europe and india put together what are we talking about where a crossing to the aircraft is manufactured in india under license so somewhere there is not only education the mindset or the culture of bringing the kids in a free thinking way is missing the entire education we are talking about here is take the book put it on internet take the tablet this that and all the programming of the mind nobody is attacking it which can take the country towards creativity innovation then make in india and then excel i think almost all the panelists they're just talking at a level which is more superficial not going to bring about any root cause change and this i have seen in foreign universities where i am a visiting professor i have worked in corporate and i'm now in academics academics is full of hypocrisy hardly there is any desire to bring about real change i want you to address this thank you i will go with that mahesh first <coughs> professor there is a long answer for this long question uh, it's like this we are actually moving towards fashion entrepreneurship 
See, I met this gentleman. I was in Phuket for a tie-up for a kickboxing studio of ours. He was from uh, London. He was a London fighter. And I was practicing with him because I also do kickboxing. And I asked him, why are you here in Thailand? He said, this is a, these guys are the best ones. I'm not that great. But I'm a winner in England. I said, uh, when did you decide to become a fighter? He said, when I was six years old. Come on, man. I know about it. Can an Indian student, you're right, can an Indian student decide when he wants to become a fighter? And do we actually move ahead of engineers, doctors, and uh, maybe somebody, uh, maybe entrepreneurs is a recent buzzword. But are we moving ahead of it? No, you're right. Basically, we have to move towards passion of each individual. We're talking about National Skill Development Council. Why have I been talking about National Skill Passion Council? What is the passion of each individual is not mapped. If you are able to map that, and if he's able to live his passion, he's going to be actually an entrepreneur. He's going to be happier about it. But it requires a sea transformation in the entire system. You're right. The culture itself doesn't support it. But having said that, whatever we are trying to do and order trying to act is basically we're coming a long way. So that come from this side, build entrepreneurship venture, slowly people will evolve. When I started my venture, it took me 10 years to convince my dad that I don't want to join my family business. I want to start on my own. But today's kids, today's fathers are saying that, let him do what he wants to. But where were, we, where were these guys 10 years back? I had to struggle to convince my family for 10 years. So it's all about the entire ecosystem moving towards that. Entire system is moving towards it. So it's a it's little of patience. We're talking about a population of 120 crore, a, a subhiti of 5,000 years old. So it will take some time, but we are moving towards that. That's how I think it's shaping up. It, it's not just entrepreneurship sales or, or technology adoption that would change or create create institutions great. It's research, it's innovation that's required. I think, as, as I mentioned earlier, it's more of a culture change where you let, give students the space, as, as Abdul was mentioning, give them, give them space to pursue this, their passion. Colleges have to imbibe this and they have to move slightly beyond imparting just knowledge of facts, but to encourage projects, encourage research, encourage entrepreneurship. This change would be slow, but would slowly come. One question here. Good evening. My name is uh, Dr. Gulshan Sharma. And uh, vision, because some of us, we are entrepreneur by accident. And some of us, we are entrepreneur by choice. Now, coming on to the education system, I think the forum becomes complete when the decision makers, the government officials, are also the part of the panel and they give the vision on to that because unless we don't change the policy, nothing can be changed. We can deliberate, we can come, we can discuss. Whosoever is a success story, they would be happy. I'm visiting uh, Bangalore after 42 years. I was here on 19th of July, 1973. I joined Indian Army and uh, because of some medical problems and some insurgency, I had to change my profession. Once I changed profession, I joined army because I didn't want to study. And when I joined uh, education system, my master's and PhD, today we got to understand from the younger generation particularly, and I personally feel those of us, those are entrepreneurs, those are into education business, no politician wants to touch education system straight because it doesn't deal or it doesn't yield results quickly. It takes longer time to build somebody's career or somebody's life. And we got to go one step ahead of employment and entrepreneurship. Last week, you can Google, there is a case in the Cambridge University where a student has put a case on the Cambridge University that your studies are boring, we are not interested. I have spent 19 lakh and I have come from India. I don't want to be part of this education system. Now, thereby, I think today, we got to understand it is not employment and entrepreneurship, it's beyond that. And particularly Naranji, I would like to share with you, it's a life management skills which we have to provide, not we got to prepare the children for employment and entrepreneurship. You got to come ahead of that because employment, entrepreneurship, this all is left over now. You got to bring a balance because today in a corporate world, you don't have a time for family at the same time. The education system, what we are imparting and what we are teaching is not yielding the result which is required by the corporate world. Why alone educationists should form the syllabi? Why not the corporate should also be a part of the full stop, the commas, the syllabus, the curriculum, the subject, the everything has to be a part of it. Anyway, this is just to cut short the story because it's a long one. I am just here as a 
curtain raiser as a person because seventh to ninth you have got parvasi bharti divas coming up over here our president is also coming from california we all will be here i just wish to share and those of us those are of my age and those are into education start realizing these four youngsters sitting over here knows much better than education than what we know my son knows better than me today what i may talk a lot but he is the one who delivers i got to listen to the youngsters and if we are really interested because 1994 we started a new project in the education 35000 students have passed that time there was no problem of getting students today there is a problem of getting students getting the right students because we are not giving them education has to be entertaining we have got today on the experimental basis 3 lakh youth from the northeast being handled by us all of them they are interested about media entertainment they are interested about music they are interested about other things sir so thank Next you so thank you so th thank you very much there is one yeah. one query nobody is wink with their eye after lunch that's the beauty of you for being on the stage uh, i have been a bit exposed to a few of things like uh, maybe i am talking entrepreneurship or not i don't know i've been seeing the freelancer.com the freelancer websites and uh, giving lots of jobs and it's uh, individual is the boss he does the job and gets his dollars gets paid to his account bank account and these things are happening and i've seen a number of indians and bangladeshis and sort of people competing with each other with pricing and getting things done and getting their money into their pockets uh, then can you for at least one of you can give it throw some light on i think this also part of entrepreneurship right consulting individual consulting you do a job maybe a software develop or a make a movie for the corporate or maybe a write an article <coughs> something like that and do a kind of voice overs to us uh, movies from sitting here lot many things are opportunities are there i have seen i'm very thrilled in fact i have done few of this uh, uh, ghost writing and i've got 10 dollars 100 dollars for around 1000 words or something that i was very thrilled to earn dollars sitting in india so can you throw some light there so that others get some information i finding it difficult to find the right institute so correct yourself on that no seriously because i do think that we need to push the onola for education institutes more than the student we can't impose on a young kid the fact that he is not the right candidate no that's unfair uh, to answer you sir the online market places for services or goods is here to stay increasingly you will find niches coming in within that so today you have freelancer.com tomorrow you will have a freelancer for only designers and only teachers and only consultants and so on and so forth it's here to stay most youngsters today don't want to be hitched to a job for a lifetime they want to work for 2 years have a great time come back and again do a job have the free time and so on and so forth so the change in work culture also is here to stay no one wants to be saying that i want to retire in this company uh, you know and i must i will tell you that you know if someone says that i want to retire with you then there is something wrong with the guy and you must sack him immediately so for me the simple thing is platforms will democratize the work culture and find a great marketplace for, as far as pricing also is concerned you will actually have today we, we decide which restaurant to go to based on zomato's reviews and which hotel to stay in tripad uh, based on tripad visa and which college to join based on career 360 that's a plug right so it's important to understand that platforms are here to stay and it is for us to live with those platforms than fighting those platforms some of us try to fight the social media platforms by saying remove this remove that how can you have something wrong about me it's important for us to learn to engage with those platforms and use those platforms then abuse or say that the platforms are going to destroy the work culture okay i think that brings us to the end of our time limit i'll just uh, with the permission of my uh, co co members want to close it by just bringing the focus back to the unadulterated you know origin of the word you know the etymology of entrepreneur it's a latin word entra and preneur it go it it's about you know it 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 has come from a context where it said that this is a fisherman who f ventures into the sea and fetches fish for himself i think the the definition of it is as fundamental as that which means that 
he knows how to fish for himself. If he's doing it only for himself, he's a freelancer. If he's doing it and employing six more people, he's a, he's a small lifestyle company. If he goes and builds it a large fishery, he becomes, he is a growth industry. So I think in our minds as thought leaders in, our, in the rooms that we sit in, we should not add any more color to it and say that the one who is a source of additional energy, additional economy, additional revenues, addition, whatever, he's an entrepreneur, a singer is an entrepreneur, an actor is a, cricketer is a, and, 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 the, and the number one market cap company also is an entrepreneur. There's no differentiation in anything. Thank you very much. Thanks for your cooperation and I hope it was a it was a value. Thank you. Thanks for that very energetic panel, just as entrepreneurship should be. So here are the two students who are benefited by this panel, Ram Kumar and Yashoda. Thank you, sir. We'll close this session at 6 uh, p.m. as per your agenda. Uh, 6 p.m. we have a high tea at uh, near the ballroom where we had lunch. 6.30 onwards, I would like you to join uh, PM Kumar, who is a board member of uh, GMR group. And uh, we have two Ayurveda families who are going to talk about perpetuity in family business. I would request all of you, it's a fire chat uh, session, which we'll be having in the boardroom, which uh, the CHRO conclave is happening. We'll have uh, the fire chat session there. I request that all of you should join this fire chat session. It's an amazing uh, uh, session by Mr. PM Kumar. So that's one announcement I thought I will leave it to you. So once uh, we finish this session, 6 p.m. we have high tea, 6.30 we have this fire chat session. Thank you. Words cannot do justice to the profile of Dr. TV Rao. So I shall desist from doing that. So I provide a very quick and brief um, profile of Dr. T.V. Rao. Dr. T.V. Rao is currently chairman TV RLS. He is associated with Indian Institute of Management Ahmedabad for the last 40 years in various capacities. First as a professor, 1973 to 94, and visiting or adjunct professor from 94 to 2014, and currently as a member of IMA Society and Board of Governors. More relevant to this audience, he is a co-founder of NHRDN and chairman of the TV Rao Learning System Private Limited. We welcome you, sir, for your lecture. Thank you. I arrived about uh, half an hour ago, and I'm very happy to have listened to the very interesting panel discussion that you have had. Uh, I think the only qualification I have here uh, to be here with you is a little bit of uh, entrepreneurial activity that I have done in setting up the National HRD Network uh, and withdrawing from it uh, to leave it for others to manage it, which is also a good entrepreneurial quality. This is what I was told at IIM Ahmedabad. When I happened to work for long years with Professor Ravi Mathai, when I joined in 1973, I had the pleasure of working with uh, Ravi Mathai, who was the first full-time director of the institute. And uh, he stepped aside after six to seven years. And after that, what I have learned for him, from him is a lot of entrepreneurial thinking. In fact, I was listening to you. I was thinking that uh, isn't education itself an entrepreneurship? I mean, why do educationists keep on talking? We need to produce entrepreneurs and things like that. I think education itself, in my view, is entrepreneurship. In 1973, when I joined IIM Ahmedabad, I was asked to evaluate an entrepreneurship development program run by four corporations in Gujarat. GIIC, GIDC, GSFC, and GSIC. They started sometime in 1968 a series of programs to get unemployed youth to be employed. Then a year later, they started technicians to be, become entrepreneurs. And they later found out some people who wanted to be entrepreneurs and trained them to be entrepreneurs. And they asked us to evaluate. They gave them a little bit of a training in three years after they started the program, they gave them training in entrepreneurial thinking, borrowed largely from David McClellan's work on achievement motivation. And then they said that, look, uh, 